So, we've got some holly. Let's take a look and see what we can do with it. We're going to use Command J, Control J to start off. So we've now duplicated our background layer. Now to this we're going to come up to Filter. We're going to drop down to Distort. We're going to go to Polar Coordinate. With Polar Coordinate we're going to go to Polar to Rectangle. That's this one here. We're going to click OK to that. Looks pretty interesting. We're now going to go to Edit. We're going to go down to Transform. We're going to go to Flip Vertical looks even more interesting. But if we come back up to Filter, we can go back to Distort, we can go back to Polar Coordinates, and with this one now we're going to go to Polar to Rectangle, and that looks even more interesting. Click in OK to that, and guess what? We have got ourselves a glass paperweight, or the start of, because we need to do a few things. You'll notice the way it's a bit elongated and, uh, yeah, not particularly a nice shape. So using Command T, Control T, we've now put the Transform tool around the outside of the image. Come into the center grab handle here. I'm going to press down and hold down the Alt or the Option key. Holding down Alt or Option is bringing the other side in as well. So we're going to bring it into that sort of area something like that looks pretty good coming to the top corner this time I'm going to press down shift on the keyboard holding down shift allows you to maintain all the correct proportions as we drop this down in size to something like this we can now lift it up that looks pretty good there pressing enter or return job done right coming over let's pick up the elliptical marquee tool we're going to get rid of this sort of fringing around the outside well it's not fringing is it it's big corners. So to get rid of those big corners we're going to press shift on the keyboard, dra dragging out the elliptical marquee tool and because we're holding down shift we're actually getting a perfect circle and coming in. I've got the first little one here which is the new selection that allows you to get that rectangle with a flag on the top of it. We can just come in, we can reposition that, not done a bad job there with the top and the bottom but the sides are just out a little bit so we're going to go to select dropping down to transform selection. With transform selection press that alt or option key and we can drag the two sides out again. So holding down that alt or option key allows us to drag the two sides out equally to something in that area. Just double clicking. That looks pretty good. Right, we've now selected but the selection we've made is the inside. Go into select, go into inverse, we've now selected the outside. You can see the selection coming right the way around. Just pressing delete on the keyboard using command D, control D, and there is our glass paperweight style image. Pressing command or control, you can move it around. There it is. Job nearly done. But I've got an idea. We're going to take it a stage further. Putting it in a new empty layer, layer 2, we're going to come across, we're going to pick up the yeah, rectangular marquee tool, that would be pretty good. We're going to click down. Again, I've got the new selection, which is the first little icon on the menu bar there. The new selection allows you to come in, you get that rectangle with a flag again, so we can just move that about. That looks good like that. Let's pick up the gradient tool, making sure we've got the linear gradient, that's the first little icon. And I've got the foreground to background, the black to the white. Click OK to that. I'm going to come into the right hand side here. I'm going to press shift on the keyboard. Holding down shift on the keyboard gives you a horizontal line. If you release shift you get a bit of a wobbly line. So holding down shift will just give you a nice straight line. Just going to click drag that over. Uh, no, perhaps not as much as that. That looks pretty good. Using command D, control D to deselect. I bet you can't guess what's coming, can you? No. Right. Let's put in a new empty layer. We're going to come across again. We're going to use the elliptical marquee tool. This time pressing down shift as we did before. Dragging it out gives us that perfect circle. So holding down shift to give us that circle. Something like uh, just taking it back a little bit. I'm looking at the top part here as I'm doing this. That looks pretty good like that. Right, we're now going to go to edit. We're now going to drop down to stroke. When stroke opens, we're going to choose it. Usually I use the location as being inside. For this particular one, we're going to go to center. The size of this, yes, you will have to experiment with. Something like that looks pretty good for the size of the image I'm working on. You can see the size down the bottom there. I'm now going to click in and change the color to something in a mid-tone gray would look pretty good. Click OK to that. Click OK to this and it will put the stroke line around it. Command D, Control D will deselect. Coming across. 
What have I got? I've got the elliptical marquee tool, but pressing command or control, it becomes the move tool. We can click down, we can drag this over, placing it into position. Oh, look at that, got the size pretty good. That's first. Not, uh, yeah, not particularly good like that. Let's call this so we know what it is. Loop. And if we grab hold of our loop, I'm going to drop it underneath layer 2. And there it is, it's now in position. Right, let's click on our top layer, layer 2. Let's click on our bottom layer, but press Shift. Now hold down Shift, click on layer 1. We've now selected them all. We can come across, pressing Command or Control again. Brings up the Move tool. We can move all three layers around together. I'm going to put it in... Let's move it across to that position there so we can see what we're doing for the next stage because we want to make it look a little bit more sort of realistic. Clicking on layer 1, we're going to drop down to the effects icon and with the effects icon we're going to go for bevel and emboss so clicking on bevel and emboss and immediately it's on the wrong side so let's zoom in a bit and let's move it across like this there it is there's our glass paperweight so we can see exactly what's going on and if we grab hold of the size we can move the size as we move the size up you can see the way it comes in now we've got the softness here as well it's always you know grab hold of the slider to see what they do the depth here can be a bit difficult it gives you this harder edge which tends to make it look a little bit bringing it back there that looks better that looks a bit more sort of rounded we need to keep that spherical look to it and coming down to the size and just playing with the way that's working and the softness looks pretty good the angle we've got here if we bring the angle we can change the angle of the lighting from one side to the other I'm going to keep it coming across from the left hand side here so dropping in on that area looks pretty good you'll notice the way it's gone clear down the bottom now you've got the opacity now if we're working with the shadow in this and you can see if I just bring that back and forth it's not got a shadow you can play there there's the shadow back so I'm just going to lift that out a little bit and as we lift it out you'll notice the way we reduce it I'm just pulling this angle here out until we remove the shadow like that pretty good so far now looking really glossy okay next we're going to go to drop shadow after removing it we're going to go for a drop shadow but this time we're going to go for a drop shadow which is going to be on the outside now I'm going to uncheck use global that is important if you leave this checked as soon as you pull it you're going to pull the drop shadow inside as well so make sure you uncheck use global drop shadows check there let's pull it out into that sort of area don't forget the lighting's coming through from this direction now using the size we're going to soften that off like this and we're going to come in and we're going to drop that down a little bit further click OK to that looking pretty good so far using command 0 control 0 to go to fit in screen just to take a look at it right let's go to our loop now we're in the loop we're going to drop down to the FX icon. We're going to come back to Bevel and Emboss. And when Bevel and Emboss opens, let's come to the depth here. So let's go to the size. We're going to take the size up. As we bring the size up and the depth, bringing that up like that, you can see the way it's rounding off there nicely. That looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to switch off Use Global. You can see the way that works with this let's go to smooth I think that would be better I'm just changing this and it's just playing with it until you get there that looks pretty good like that let's click OK there it is there is our glass paperweight which has now become a Christmas bauble one other thing I'd like to do is come to layer 2 layer 2 of course is our collar effect at the top here now there's a few things we're going to do with this first of all let's zoom in don't forget we just applied the gradient to it which gives it a pretty sort of uh, flat look in fact I'm going to click on we've got layer 2 I'm going to click on the loop as well pressing command or control as we're doing that so both now are selected coming across pressing down command or control I'm just going to lift it up and reposition it there I think that looks better right coming back to layer 2 pressing down command or control keeping up good <laughs> clicking it down so we've now made a selection around here because we're going to go to filter we're going to drop down to noise we're going to go to add noise when add noise comes in clicking on that area there you can see we've got a very small amount you can sort of no that's way over the top I said we need to use a very small amount 2.45 looks particularly brilliant we have got Gaussian we've got monochromatic we're going to click OK to that 
We're now going to go to Filter. We're going to drop down to Blur. We're going to go to Motion Blur. Motion Blur, we're going to set the angle to zero. Setting the angle to zero, if I click in the window there, I've got the distance set on 11. Again, depending on the picture size, the file size you're working with, you will need to experiment. It gives that nice brushed finish to it. OK, while we're at it, Command D, Control D to deselect. Let's come down. Let's click on the effects icon. Let's go down to Drop Shadow with this. Making sure you switch off, use global, otherwise you'll affect it for the entire image with the shadow. I'm just going to pull it so you can see a little touch down the bottom like this, just using the size to come out over the side a bit and just lifting it up. I just want to give it that little bit of contact down there with the bottom part. Click OK using Command 0, Control 0 to go to fitting screen. There it is. That's the story so far.